As a student in the now time of life, your moral and ethical behavior is defined by your active involvement in the living of now, as you take your place in an ever-increasing urban society. Dr. Torstensen, I remember uh, before we left on this trip, we sat down and had a short discussion about some of the aspects that we wish to cover in Milwaukee. And at that time, I don't think that we really had any conception of the challenge of trying to do this type of research. And there certainly were problems involved that we recognized once we got there. And you'd mentioned mass movements. And this uh, Milwaukee march flashed across my mind because I remembered that the Council of Churches had planned a bus to go. The noise kind of disturbed me with the, it was such a mixture with the, uh, the sanctuary itself, with the, the statuettes of the Catholic Church and the altar, and it just didn't, it didn't fit in my mind. think about this kind of a research experience. Is it possible to do an objective research in the old typical sociological format and really, really learn what you learn in this kind of a participation role that you played? Augsburg College in Minneapolis accepts the fundamental challenge to explore, discuss, and, discuss and, interpret and interpret issues, issues of our of present our existence. Present existence. It, it seems to me that, that with both Plato and Aristotle, uh, the good life is, is a rather Spartan life by our standards today. And uh, we, would, uh, we would surely uh, not want to go back to that sort of simple kind of life and, and call it the good life. Uh, what do you think the reaction would be to uh, the kind of affluent society in which we find ourselves today? Um, is, is the good life no longer possible? Are we so far beyond it that we cannot have a good life? You know why it's so exciting for me to teach a course such as this at Augsburg. I am from the area and then I had the wonderful opportunity to start a field at Augsburg such as this, having been trained in the field for my doctorate. This is really an exciting thing. And it's wonderful to see the students uh, respond so well. He wrote a theory 20 years ago. 
explaining international relations in terms of a struggle for power. And I think that for the past 20 years, people have been arguing about this theory. And now, I don't accept it. I don't think you accept it. I don't think you accept it. But I think that everyone has discussed it so much and argued about it so much that if we don't consider it, we don't know what the argument is all about. We have a certain amount of uh, residue left from uh, the ideals of World War I or pre-World War I. We have the uh, World Peace Movement mm -hmm. to bring it back in, isn't it? Uh, well, Morgenthau, yes, attacks them and attacks them so ferociously that he hopes that yeah. the idealists will die forever. Right. But they haven't. <laughs> I suppose that after the triad, you would go to a major six. My body lies over, see, ba -da. When you have a dull line, throw in a sixth. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is, is an impulsive thing, first of all. And secondly, the fact that the, the impulse is also connected up with the, you know, uh, should I or shouldn't I and how serious is it depends on how much they're using it as an, an attention getter. Yeah, he mentioned attention getting. He said that a person, uh, if he's really set to do it, he probably is not going to call. Mm -hmm. A person who, the, who calls is uh, ambivalent, mm -hmm. whether he should do it or not. Mm -hmm. And he finds that the problem isn't to talk the person out of it, out of doing it. It's a problem of reinforcing him not to do it. Mm -hmm. In this business now, where we've been talking in the lectures on child psychology about the overall concept of development. Uh, do you have an idea now or a clearer picture of what is involved in the concept development as a process? Or is it even a process? Well, ready? ready? All right, in this business now where we've been discussing development in the child psych class, is this something that you have a clear idea of now as a concept itself or as a process of development or, you know, is it still confusing? theoretically confusing, or even practically confusing? Well, let's say that uh, I started off the confusing picture of it. I got more and more clear as we got into development in some of the... In the morning. All right, fine. Well, you know, Doug, I think you have to consider Morgenthau in international relations, even if you don't accept him, because... Well, it seems to me that with Morgenthau, we have... And this is the, uh, the hope has been uh, dashed by Mar Morgenthau, and this is the significance of Morgenthau, is that we have, uh, we have eliminated these idealistic approaches, or we have found a basis to eliminate them. This is the, the real beginning significance, the most important mm -hmm. thing, the reason to look at Morgenthau. Don't you agree? Uh, to a certain extent. Trying, no, and that this is definitely a significant influence. One could hardly ignore uh, probably Israel. Right. I don't know if I would say it was their idealism or ours, but uh, we admire this. I had, yes. I mean, just this last Israeli. Uh, do you think it was worthwhile to have an hour and a half discussion on Morgenthau? Do you think we wasted an hour and a half? Well, no. I think it was very useful, not only for the reasons you mentioned about the fact that this has been the policy that's been discussed and reacted to over the last 20 years. But also because it seems to me that the, po the, po the theory has value. I think it, it recognizes certain realities. I think his major flaw is that he anticipates that people will act rationally. And regardless of whether we like that or not, it seems to me that that's the way things usually are. And this doesn't really involve power in his definition. Mm -hmm. This is this is something else. I mean, this is morality or something. This is so. In that sense, you only have two choices: you either help yourself or you hurt yourself. I do think that when people are acting rationally, they usually pursue their country's national interests. They won't rationally do something that they know or that they think will harm the country, or hurt the country in the long run or the short mm -hmm. run. So I think it has value in that if we anticipate that most of the world is run by rational people, we have some basis for which to predict what their actions are going to be in the future. Yeah, but the value here is is only in success. This is all the value you have, right? I mean... Well, whether they should act that way. It seems to me that that's the way they do act, generally. That countries don't consciously do things that they know are going to hurt them. It doesn't hold on 100% of the cases. I, I offhand can't think of a case right off the top of my head where a country actually did something they knew, or the leader did something that he knew would either hurt him or his country, whichever yeah, is the time that, considered most the, important. He's not arguing with that. He's not saying uh, they're going to do things that are not. Doug, you're saying that a country will not consciously act against its national interest, but that not all decisions are rational. Right. So. And Morgenthau is exaggerating the extent to which rationality determines right. decisions. And I also add that as far as this, sometimes countries have unilateral disarmament or something like that, there's no better ground of just mm -hmm. making a decision that doesn't affect you one way or the other. 
because if it does, if it doesn't alter your power, it's not a political decision. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, convenient in the sense that, I mean, then it's logical to say that Morgenthau, on the one hand, is saying they always do what's good for them, and the only other alternative is to do what's bad for them. So he's saying that they act in the national interest. I say they didn't do anything that hurts the national interest. And in his language, they're the same thing. And whether that's convenient or not, I think it's, mm -hmm. if you define politics that way, it, it makes good sense. Of course, there are a lot of...